Now, as I said before, I want you to focus very specifically. The new cinematic, show me. <laughs> Terra Gregory going, wait, what? <laughs> oh my god, all these cinematics are just too good. Just too good. But alright, before we get into this, guys, I want you to focus on what or, or how things are said. The differentiation between things said. Because I do think that that's going to be important. Specifically, the Jailer's opening lines. Listen, listen to what the Jailer says. I'm probably going to pause anyways and let you guys know what he says. But anyways, um, you asked for it. Let's watch it. All that matters is we now possess the necessary instrument. We must begin its preparation. Leave him to me. There's something very interesting that happened here. Very interesting. Listen to... Listen to what the Jailer says once again. And then listen to how Sylvanas responds. Must begin his preparation. Leave him to me. We must begin its preparation. Leave him to me. The jailer does not even recognize Anduin as a person, as a living being, as a mortal. It doesn't matter. It's a weapon. It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing that I'm going to use to further my own goals. I don't care. Sylvanas, on the other hand, leave him to me. In other words, him. It's a person. It's a mortal. I can turn him. I can get him on our side. This is why I say to you guys, I do not believe that the Jailer and Sylvanas ultimately have the same goal. I think the Jailer told Sylvanas that they have the same goal, but they ultimately do not. There is clearly, and, and we'll get to the other cinematic as well, where we see Sylvanas and Anduin, because I am going to throw that in here, because there is more that needs to be uncovered in that one as well. But okay, so now that we've established that, the Jailer, literally, it's just a weapon, it's just a thing, it's just a thing that I'm going to use, right? Sylvanas clearly doesn't share that viewpoint, at least not in how she talks about him. You've seen what he is capable of when he believes in the cause. A measure of patience may yield superior results. It's interesting that Sylvanas wants this. And what I mean by this is she wants him to make the choice freely when he believes in the cause not when we've made him or when we've turned him or when we forced him when he believes in the cause remember remember the cinematic and we actually probably should just pull that up uh right at the end here but through the jailer oh you've joined what makes you believe you're not just a weapon to achieve his ends? You have a choice to consider. Join us willingly. Or be made to serve. I thought you believed in free will, Sylvan. I thought you believed in free will. She does. She tells him there's no such thing. As free will. Yes, Sylvanas is absolutely gorgeous in the cinematic. 100%. Um, but she she tells him there's no such thing. You've never had free will. And yet here, she pretty much confirms. right? She pretty much says it when he believes in the cause. In other words, he will make that decision. He will join us. Totally not a simp. No, 100% simp for, for, the, for the Dark Lady. I have confirmed this many a times before. The Dark Lady may rule forever. Everyone knows that. That's 100% where I stand on things. And if you're not simping for Sylvanas, you're doing it fucking wrong. Just 100% want to say, it's clear you've not been paying attention. She is the only one worth simping for. Anyways, with that said, let's get back into... Uh, let's get back into the... Uh, into this video. Superior results. Very well. Our weapon. Now, we shall own it. 
he sticks with it. He still does not call Sylvanas or Anduin a person. He still does not view Anduin as a person, but this is where things become really interesting. If you guys, if we go back to uh, Battle for Azeroth, in Battle for Azeroth, we get a very interesting whisper. The light has struck a bargain with the enemy of all. We now know who the enemy of all is. And we also know that that bargain must have been struck with Zuval. When Kalia Menethil died, she would have gone into the moor. At that point, it was already broken. So Kalia Menethil would have gone into the moor. The only way to get Kalia Menethil out of the moor would have been to strike a bargain with Zuval. He wouldn't just let it go unless there was some sort of bargain being struck there. The second Anduin used the light was the moment Zuval said, interesting. And Anduin told him, you failed. And he's like, no, I have exactly what I need. Those two things, in my opinion, link up. Those two things, in my opinion, link up. You have Anduin, a user of the light. Even in the Moor, the light responds to him. And you have a whisper from an old god saying, the light has struck a bargain with the enemy of all. And I, I want to make this very clear. The fact that the light can bring back someone and make them undead, make them forsaken in a way, although they wouldn't be forsaken because forsaken specifically refers to forsaken by the light. That's what forsaken refers to, at least historically. That's what forsaken used to mean. That's why they called themselves the forsaken. Because remember, all the denizens of Lordaeron, Lordaeron was sort of the capital city of the light, right? They were almost all priests and paladins. The light was very heavily worshipped in Lordaeron. So when they came back as undead, they found that the light would not respond to them. It would take them uh, decades to finally learn how to once again wield the light. And even then, it's painful for undead priest priests to wield the light. Um, so it, it took a very long time for them to get the light back. This is why they refer to themselves as forsaken by the light, by the living, by everyone. They are truly forsaken. Now, for the light to make an undead character, to use necromancy in that way, they would have had to strike a bargain with someone. And according to the old gods, this was the enemy of all. So what if, and I don't know the extent of this, speculation theory i genuinely don't know the extent I, I i i have not connected all of the dots so if you have any sort of th uh, thoughts on this i would love to hear it actually this is just another whisper that came to mind the boy king serves at the master's table three lies will he offer you it is one of the whispers that we have spent months on and still have no answer to because we do not know what the three lies is but it doesn't have to be lies that was already told it could be lies that is coming now of course that could also refer to anduin giving into the void as we see it right we see it in shadows rising there is void running into the palm of anduin's hand and then dissipating so there could also be different lies that we have yet to see. Those lies may not yet be revealed because I'm reminded instantly as I said that of the, the Ogmot. Ogmot says that the first lie has already been told. Do you not see it? So Ogmot confirms this. Ogmot is long before these events. And so Anduin clearly does not serve at the master's table, at least not Zuval as the master but that's just something that needs to be kept in mind for this but zuval is clearly let's get back into the speculation theory zuval is clearly um on a rampage yeah zuval's war at least as he is telling us at the moment his war is against the cosmos 
Zuval is going against the first ones. He's going against the, the very mechanisms of our universe. In order to do this, he would need allies. There is simply no way that Zuval could do this without some kind of cosmological ally. We know that the light is in Revendreth, and the light claims that they are seeking retribution. If you go to Revendreth and you meet the Naru there, they tell you that they are seeking retribution for something that was done to them long ago, a slight that was committed against them. So the light would be ample um, motivated to go against the Shadowlands, to attack the Shadowlands. The question is, to what end? For what end? What does the light want? Because clearly I don't think that the light wants to bring about the end of all things. At least, that's not how I read the light. They would rather control all things than destroy all things. But, the light does need an ally. Sylvanas requires an ally. Uh, an ally. But what does the Jailer truly want? That is the question. That is the main question. And they never forget, and we have discussed this multiple times, but I want you all to look at what Blizzard is setting up here. What Blizzard is doing in this moment. And, and we'll, we'll end this specific theory on this note. But I want you to pay close attention to the, the back and forth, the rapport that's being established between Anduin and Sylvanas. This is going to be important later on. This is going to feature later on. There is a level of respect, and Anduin most likely earns Sylvanas' respect, or Sylvanas' respect, because of his father. Sylvanas had a lot of respect for Varian Ren, and therefore Anduin would, by extension, most likely have this respect as well. And this is, I think, the tool... If there ever was a tool, not that I want Sylvanas to have a redemption story. I want to be clear on this. I don't like redemption stories. I prefer anti-heroes to a redemption story. So I would like Sylvanas to become the anti-hero, but not necessarily the, redeem uh, the redeemed hero in the, in the sense that we got with, uh, with, with Illidan, for example, right? But in this instance... Um, this is definitely a vehicle that Blizzard is setting up. This is definitely a vehicle that Blizzard is using. Take a look at this and pay attention to the back and forth between them. There is a level of respect. There's, there's a conversation, a debate happening. If Blizzard wanted to set up the idea that Sylvanas is overpowering him, that Sylvanas is, is sort of mindlessly going to force him, there would not be that level of debate. So take a look at this and then you guys let me know what you think. I do hope you've settled in. The accommodations are a bit sparse, I know. Where are the others? Are they safe? Safe? No, I wouldn't say I, oh my god, I love that moment. Uh, this is one of my favorite moments ever. I need to, I need to show you guys again. Oh my, the way she says that, it's just absolutely perfect. Save. No, <laughs> I wouldn't say any of them are safe. Oh my god. I am so tired of your games. As you wish. No more secrets, no more lies. You are a weapon we will use to achieve our ends. I will not become an instrument of death. So you favor life, is that it? That momentary flicker. Every cruel second spent delaying the inevitable in an endless war that you, like every rim before you, will not survive. You know the truth. Nothing is fair. Not life, not death. 
So we're going to tear it all down. And what purpose would that serve? Everyone suffers, Sylvanas. But destroying everything will not take away the pain. Oh, you misunderstand. We're breaking so a system that has always been flawed and remaking it into one that is just. Just quickly want to point out here. This is where a lot of people lose their minds because a lot of people, I've seen the tweets, I've seen the responses to this. A lot of people point out, oh my God. So wait, uh, you're going to save us by destroying everything? She, 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 she literally says it. It's not the world, the universe that needs destroying. It's the system. It's the system that holds it together that needs destroying. The universe is fine. It can exist as it exists. It's the system that sort of covers it. That's what's important. <laughs> Do you expect me to believe that all this time you've been fighting for justice? How can I convince you? From our first breath, to our last. Every decision is made for us. Then, the afterlife decides what eternity we must endure. We can't even choose who we- I'm still gonna say it. I'm still gonna fucking say it, and I know there's all sorts of crazy things. Who we love. Who we love. I don't want to hear anything else. If you think it's something else, you are wrong. Who we love 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 is the only thing that could make you pull back it's the only thing that could have that sort of inhale moment that sort of <gasps> it's stopping yourself from almost pulling the words back in as if you're trying to stop the words from coming out so if you think it's not love you're wrong you're you're, you're just wrong yeah she's she it's it's that thing she doesn't want to be um she doesn't want to be vulnerable that's a vulnerable moment for her, and she does not want it. Well, she did love Nathanos. We couldn't control anything. But through the Jailer, control of our fate will at last be possible. Look around you! At what and who you've joined. What makes you believe you're not just a weapon? to achieve his ends. The reason I wanted to show you this is th this is the last moment that's really important for the cinematic. Look around you at who, at what you've joined. Anduin is already considering her premise. He's not fighting her on the premise. He did. He did. At the beginning, he did. He was like, uh, so you want to destroy everything? But listen to this last bit. He's not fighting her on the premise anymore. He's fighting her on the method. He's not okay with why or how she wants to go about it. But the why he's seemingly sort of okay with. Maybe not yet fully on board. It's not like he's going to pick up his banner tomorrow. But there is a part of him that goes, I can, I can see what you're saying. But is this really the way to do it? Is this really, Sylvanas, how you think this needs to happen? And then, of course, we have the free will at the end of it, which I also think is rather important. I also think is something that people need to keep in mind. Uh, the, the free will, but she does give him that free will. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think?